This is probably one of the most amazing ways to um, to get the masses more interested in opera singers and classical music. As you all know, my name is Taylor Gonzaga and I'm the artistic director and co-founder of Opera Cecilia and the Opera Cecilia YouTube channel. We're bringing an opera singer back onto the channel, which is excellent because, you know, that's kind of what our company's all about. This is a song that I am such a huge fan of. Oh my gosh. It was an old recording from the 1980s and I just listened to it over and over again. It was so inspiring to me. And I got a few requests for this one. So this is the ultimate mashup between classical and contemporary style music with the incredible Freddie Mercury and the absolutely beautiful stunning Montserrat Caballé. This is Barcelona, the song that was written about the home city of who Freddie Mercury affectionately calls Montsi. These artists have both passed on at this point. Uh, may they both rest in peace. They were absolutely incredible, incredible contributors to the musical landscape all over the world. And I'm so excited to profile them on the channel. Hit like, subscribe, uh, click the notification bell and continue to help our channel grow because all of that means so much to us over here on the Opera Cecilia YouTube channel. Oh my gosh. Continue to send requests our way as well because we will honor as many of them as we can uh, throughout this video series and other videos series that we will start as well in the future. Also, don't forget that Opera Cecilia does have a few projects up on our webpage, which will be linked in the description box below. So Freddie Mercury, his original name was Frederick Bolsara. His life began on the East African island of Zanzibar on September 5th, 1946. 25 years later in London, he took the name Freddie Mercury when he was fronting the legendary rock group Queen. He began, I guess, taking piano lessons at the age of seven, but no one could foresee where his love of music from an early age would actually take him. Um, they moved to Middle Essex in 1964, and from there, Freddie joined up with a blues band called Wreckage while studying graphic design courses at the um, Ailing College of Art. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, while singing for this band, a fellow student introduced Freddie to Roger Taylor and Brian May, which were the founding members of a band called Smile. Smile ended up kind of turning into Queen eventually, and um, when Freddie joined Roger and Brian as the lead vocalist. And then the final member of the band, um, this band was to stay together for the next 20 years. Um, and the final member was bassist John Deacon, and that kind of like created the band that we knew as Queen. They um, released incredible pieces of work that had kind of classical components to them or influences from other genres. A huge example of that is Bohemian Rhapsody, which is a song that I would love to actually break down bit by bit and analyze in this channel. I feel like that'd be super fascinating. So. Let me know if you're interested in a video like that below. He was known for his super, super capable singing voice. And what I, what I mean by capable is that he was classically trained. He had wonderful technique, um, but he also was extremely theatrical and big on stage and gave extremely entertaining performances. Barcelona went on to become an anthem for Senora Caballé's home city and the theme for the Olympics that were hosted in Barcelona in 1992. So this song not only goes down in history as being a part of the Olympic Games, but also was an incredible amalgamation of both classical and contemporary musical styles. I had this perfect dream. This dream was me and you. I want all the world to see Instinct of Aguilar Miracle sensation My guide and inspiration Now my dream is slowly coming true Montserrat Caballé was born in 
1933 on April 12th, um, and then she died actually in 2018, so actually relatively recently, just a few years ago, in her home city of Barcelona. She was a Spanish operatic soprano that was admired for her versatility and phrasing and for her performances in operas by Giuseppe Verdi, Gioteno Donizetti, and Richard Strauss in particular. Um, she began her studies as a child at the Conservatory Le Cieux in Barcelona. In 1956, she joined the Basel Opera, in which that year she had her first major role as Mimi in La Boheme. In 1959, she became a principal singer with the Bremen Opera, and her repertory soon included 46 Italian, German, and French roles. That's a, actually quite a few roles to learn in your lifetime as a singer. She ended up performing several times with the Metropolitan Opera in New York, um, and she performed in leading opera houses of the world and gave many recitals, most notably of um, Spanish repertoire. There is a competition in Spain that is set up in her name for young artists. I've um, it's kind of one of my personal goals to at least give my <laughs> give it a shot at some point in my career. And now I just wanted to share a really, really brief excerpt from this article of like the history behind this song in particular. This man, Carles Gelli, he worded his article on this so succinctly and so poetically that I wanted to share some of it with you. This was written in Barcelona, I guess, on October 8th, 2018. So this was the year that Montserrat Caballé died. Without warning, he sat down at the piano at the former hotel Hotel Ritz in Barcelona and began to improvise exercises in free love, singing in falsetto what would be her part if she accepted. It was the beginning of 1987 and the first time Queen frontman Freddie Mercury met Spanish soprano Montserrat Cavalle. This meeting would lead to a legendary musical partnership that would bring the best of the classical and contemporary music world together in the iconic anthem Barcelona, written ahead of the 1992 Olympic Games. Freddie Mercury greatly impressed her when they first met because um, she could tell that he was just such a sincere, earnest, and incredible musician, and they shared a kinship through that. Monsi was kind of the nickname, like I said before, that Mercury adopted for her during the course of their collaboration and friendship. Um, and then the Queen vocalist sent endless messages to the opera star to get her to collaborate with him. Like it took a while for her to actually be on board with the project, but she's so glad that she got the opportunity to do it based off of the things I've read about her. The iconic song Barcelona was born out of the music and lyrics by Mercury and his producer Mike Habiton. The theme of the song was no coincidence. The soprano had been tasked by the then mayor of Barcelona, Pascual Maragall, with performing at the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games, perhaps singing the anthem, but it was Caballé's own brother Carles who suggested that she sing at the Olympics with Mercury. They also linked by their religious faith and the fact that Freddie Mercury historically was, it didn't tell about the illness that ended up leading to his death, didn't tell anybody about that illness except for Montserrat Caballé at the time. So they grew very, very close and they kind of bonded over that. And she said that it was special to her, but also sad and bittersweet that she got to share one of his final triumphant musical moments. Um, with him in this piece. Freddie Mercury tragically died before the Olympic Games ceremony performance was to take place at Barcelona, but a recording of Barcelona was still played as an anthem for the Games, and Montserrat Caballé ended up uh, performing with um, another famous opera singer, Jose Carreras, um, during the opening ceremony instead. And you see Freddie Mercury move on stage in the initial stage presence versus Montserrat Cavalle. It is 100% indicative of their individual personalities. They're moving according to their characters in the piece and according to the contours of their vocal line. So when Freddie Mercury sings, it's not like there isn't any legato at all, but because he sings in a rock style, it is a little bit more percussive in the sense that it has more defined beats. There is a lot of emphasis, there's a little bit more of an emphasis on consonants and there is a, there's a little bit more of an emphasis on individual words in general. He is also singing in a language that is more consonant and glottal or uh, uh type sound, that's what a glottal is, glottal driven, than a um, language like what Montserrat Cavalle is singing in, which is a lot more vowel heavy and a lot more, um, uh, legato 
which in musical terms basically means smooth and connected sound. And their hand gestures are actually taking on the characterization of the way that they are singing their languages and the way that they're singing their, their pieces, their parts in this piece. And as a result of that, there's a, some more jagged or exciting movements, jagged in a good way, exciting movements coming from Freddie Mercury. And then there's these really, really smooth, dance-like, graceful movements coming from Montserrat Caballé. And it's so complementary because it's different, but it's being celebrated for its differences. So there's a lot going on in the physicality of these performers in addition to the quality of their voices, which of course are absolutely fantastic in and of themselves. I'm going to nerd a little bit out about Montserrat Caballé's vocal technique, where she placed that she didn't feel like she was charging up to it. She was able to place that sound absolutely beautifully. And how you do that as a vocalist is you imagine where you want to place that sound before you actually sing it. If you're analyzing things while you're actually singing, you're analyzing a little bit too late. And so what she does is she does kind of the brain work before she even opens her mouth. And so she knows that she's right where she needs to be and she can just rely on that feeling when she starts. Is it gentle? She's keeping a vertical vowel placement and it's really helping her. It's also so thrilling to me that at the end of that, who wish my dream would never go away. When she sings that, she is like holding out that legato and gradually going into a crescendo and suspending that note when um, Freddie Mercury just lets it go. And what it creates is kind of this layered effect in the vocalism that is not only such a beautiful complementary force when you have some, one person singing in a contemporary style and one person singing in a more classical style, but it also highlights the strengths of the classical voice because she can let that um, that note float and sustain a little bit longer. And so she does it and Freddie Mercury lets her have that moment. Um, I think a big part of being a seasoned professional performer is when you are in a collaboration on stage with another performer, you know how to let them have their moments and then you fully own up to your moments that you get in the performance as well. Mercury is known for being very theatrical and of course as an opera singer Montserrat Caballé has that theatricality to her performance as well and once again we we see these dual personalities that are so different but so complementary to each other in that huge beautiful climactic chorus and of course we cannot underestimate the power of the backing vocals the power of that kind of chorus sound coming behind them and the power of this like full orchestration and full band that's happening too. That is swelling into this chorus that makes it really, really characteristic of an anthem and not just a really great song, but something that can really get a crowd riled or get people motivated. Um, anthems have to be inherently motivating. And that's definitely something that the orchestration and that the vocals are doing in this chorus, particularly. It's iconic in that sense. But Freddie Mercury kind of gets his shining moment in the chorus. He lets Montserrat Caballé have these beautiful suspended notes in the verses. She, she has these moments of like just beautiful, florid um, vocal technique. And then you have this incredible, passionate rock sound that is 
coming out and contrasting it. I wanted to stop and talk about Freddie Mercury's technique real, real quickly, since I've been talking so much about hers. So Freddie Mercury, what he's doing is this wonderful thing called intentional vocal distortion, which is, that's what I call it anyway, when people are stylizing their voices to have a little bit of rasp or growl in them for the sake of passionate expression. That's a really wonderful thing to do as long as you have a baseline of foundational technique and breath support underneath, which we know that Freddie Mercury has not only because of his background of being classically trained, that's one of the main things they teach you when you are trained classically, um, but also because he goes back to like a very, very clean cut sound when in certain parts of the verses as well. And so he's oscillating back and forth. He's not staying in the same place vocally the entire time, but he's allowing that stylization to come in because it leans even more into the contrast between the super clean operatic vocalism that Montserrat Caballé is doing. Let the song Okay, I get so excited about this part because Montserrat Caballé does this beautiful, like, upward, melismatic coloratura line that just goes right into what Freddie Mercury is going to do. So the way that the song was written to complement both voices was so masterful. I just, I freak out about the song because it's just so well done. <laughs> I don't know why every single time I watch this I freak out so much that I get a little bit emotional and um, it's funny this is there's a fun story about this song with me because um, when I was in uh, my master's degree, I had to take a, a class called Psychology of Music that all of the master's uh, music students had to take. And this class, like it talked about what music resonates with you the most or what they think describes you as an artist. And because I myself am an artist that just relates and reflects and deeply, deeply loves so many different genres, I'm classically trained. Most of what I do in my performance career is classical music or musical theater, but I am so deeply in tune with the rock music and the country music and the folk music and the alternative music of my youth and the music that I absolutely love to listen to in my free time. There are so many genres that are such an important part of my life that when I see such a beautiful blend of two absolutely incredible genres, such as rock singing and opera, it just, it makes my heart so happy. So they had us, you know, share these songs that resonated the most with us as artists. And this was one of the ones that I shared because it was just so powerful to me the first time that I saw this when I was like 15, 16 years old. Um, so I have a personal, personal, very special relationship with this piece. And these artists, just every single thing that they do is so, they just let the art come out of their bodies. 
That I think is the best way to describe it. They just let it come out of them. They don't think too much. They're very feeling based. They're very emotion based as artists. And that's what allows us to connect the end of this piece. That's when you start really hardcore hearing them sing in harmony for the first time before it's kind of like a call and response thing with harmonization moments. But then at the end, we get some legitimate vocal lines that are sung in harmony between the two of them. And it's such a beautiful, fun blending of the two voices that is so thrilling. Of course, this song was going to become iconic. This is probably one of the most amazing ways to um, to get the masses more interested in opera singers and classical music is for us to break those barriers and collaborate with people of other genres. This is a very special video to me, so I hope all of you enjoy my reaction and my insights to this piece that has had a special place in my heart for many, many years now. I will be releasing our first Billie Eilish video really soon. Super excited for that. A few other opera singers will be coming onto the channel very, very soon. And we will also be, you know, just continuing to develop new fun content for you all over on the OC YouTube. So if you're not already subscribed, Come join the community. Also, feel free to check out our videos on Disney's Encanto. We've released two of them and we're going to be continuing that little sub-series of reactions on different songs from that movie. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye. Yeah.